Hey, everybody. Uh, so we're back. We're ready to go. We're live. Uh, I'm glad that you all are here. We are highly populated. We have uh, about 20 something folks on the, on the, on the Zoom here. And so uh, let me first introduce myself. My name is Dr. Akil Kalfani. I'm the director of the Africana Institute here at Essex County College in Newark, New Jersey. I see we have folks from all over the place. We have people from California, from New Jersey, uh, from New York, and who knows where else we're from. So uh, we're excited that you all are here and we want to just make sure that, uh, that this is a festive opportunity. So make sure you have you a little sip of water or some tea or whatever you might wanna drink and, uh, and join us on this tour. And we're gonna have a good time. Uh, I might even take a couple of questions at the end. Uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll have fun and see how it works out though. Um, so we don't wanna be too uh, much of your time we're gonna take up, but uh, let me just give a little background of the Africana Institute. So I've been here now for 15 years as a director and I was uh, brought on here as the director of, back when Dr. Yamba was president. So Dr. Yamba, uh, hired me as, as the director of the Africana Institute back in uh, 2006. And the Africana Institute opened up in 2001. So this is actually our 20th year. Come May, the Africana Institute will have been here for 21 years. Uh, but this is the closing out of our 20th anniversary. So uh, we, were, we, uh, we were asked last year to, during the pandemic, to do a virtual tour. It was actually in February also. And uh, I said, sure, that would be great. And we did it, it was, it was well, very well received. So I said, let's do it again this year. Maybe there's a bunch of people who didn't get a chance to see it. And so we were excited that you all are here and having an opportunity to join us today. I know we have over 60 something, almost 70 something people registered. So, you know, what I encourage you to do is to go out and tell your friends to register, tell them to join us uh, and, and, and get to see what the insides of the Africana Institute are like. You know, one of the things that we do here is we take uh, students abroad. So I've had the opportunity to travel in many places uh, in Africa and elsewhere uh, in the African diaspora. And we've taken these trips. So our first trip was to South Africa. And uh, that was an amazing trip. I think that was in 2008, 2007 or 2008. Uh, and then we went to Ghana. Uh, then we took students to, to Cuba. Uh, and so we've gone to all, a lot of different places. And I've been collecting stuff myself for all the years that I've been going back and forth to the continent and, and really even to festivals and things uh, uh, where I go and, and buy uh, artifacts. So we'll get a chance to see a bunch of those things, both that I've collected and others have collected. And now things that uh, uh, um, some of my stuff is, belongs to me, but then there's stuff that belongs to the African Institute. So uh, all of those things you'll get a chance to, to see uh, some of, not all of them, but many of them, because we have so much stuff, thankfully, that we have things that are in our in our storage, and what we do is that we we rotate things in our in a, um, what I call our gallery. So you'll see in our conference room. Uh, but then we have this exhibition uh, that I curated called Pan Africana in Nine Boxes. And uh, you know I, I was trying to think about something that was a way and a place to, to display some of the items, and we had done some of these things before, and so uh, this gave us another opportunity to kind of really. Uh, take these things out and, and share them with the public. And uh, we're going to uh, uh, do this uh, a, a couple of times, but we want to make sure that we thank uh, all the folks that helped make this possible. Uh, you know, the, uh, obviously the, the current president, uh, Dr. Buachi, um, you know, he's been a, a champion of the Africana Institute and the things that we've done here on campus. Uh, we also want to make sure that we're thanking uh, uh, the students uh, who've helped uh, bring this into fruition. So I have a list of students uh, that we're going to be thanking uh, shortly. Uh, and also Dr. Wager, uh, who helped with some video and things that we're gonna be sharing with you. Um, and then we have uh, uh, some of our friends who've helped to, uh, who've been donating artwork to the African Institute uh, for, for some for years and others have had one-time donation. So we wanna make sure that we thank uh, Paul Rosenberg and Eden Friedman and we'll have a more formal uh, thanking of them later on. But uh, Enid is a, a formal professor here at the college. Uh, she was in the English department. And uh, after she retired, they, they made a, a wonderful gift to the Africana to some, some great pieces. And so we'll get to see some of those today. Uh, we may not uh, talk about each one of them. We're not gonna talk about every single piece here because we have a lot of material, uh, but we're gonna uh, talk about some and we'll see some. 
and then we'll save some for another time. <laughs> and then you have to come back to our future of, of, of time that we take another tour and we may do a tour uh, that looks at very specific kinds of things. And so then you'll get a, a different kind of take on it. Today, we're gonna do a broad brush uh, look at the things that we have here in the Institute and we're gonna have an exciting time. So uh, right now I'm gonna show you a little clip uh, for something that we did earlier and you'll get a chance to see uh, what we did. So, so stay tuned and, um, and, and enjoy uh, all the, the fabulous things here at the Institute. Welcome to the Africana Institute. Today we're going to take a tour of the Africana Institute and you'll get an opportunity to see some of the amazing artwork we have. And we have this exhibition going on that's called Pan-Africana in Nine Boxes. And you'll see what that's all about. So this first box here just gives us an opportunity to kind of display and show some of the things going on. Uh, what this is all about, some of the places from which things come. And then we get into our first big box here. And we have a display of the Indebele dolls. Indebele dolls are from South Africa. And they're a group of people called the Indebele. They make these beaded dolls. And so they're uh, beautiful things to look at, but they're about fertility. So these are fertility dolls uh, that women and girls have uh, older girls, women and girls have to help them to prepare themselves for fertility, uh, for childbirth. And so then there we have this celebration of the, uh, of the, the fertility dolls in the ballet. This is Mancala. So it's a board game. Uh, you see the beautiful uh, artwork here that they've done on it, but inside this one looks like this. This is Nigerian artifacts. We'll talk about them more later. Close it again? Mm -hmm. Open it. Here we have Jamaica, Jamaican drum, and two women in Jamaica, one carrying a load on her back and the other walking to the marketplace. We have a, a steel pan from Antigua, and then we have uh, maracas from Jamaica and Cuba, and then we have instruments from Africa as well. All shakers. Here we have a mixture, some more instruments, a uh, war helmet from Ghana, a sweet grass basket from down South Carolina, and some other African artifacts we'll talk about on Friday. So this one I call Kate to Cairo. And this is a stone mask or stone statue. And this is a, um, a replica of ancient Egyptian or comedic artwork. Now in the middle though, we have Malachite, which is from Democratic Republic of the Congo and elsewhere. And one rare piece of ivory. Uh, we don't see much ivory anymore, but this is an ivory mask. It's a replica of something that's worn when young folks go through initiation process. So we have, uh, these are gold weights that were used in Ghana uh, to when people traded gold. So these uh, bicycles and instruments are actually uh, actual items that were used 
to weigh, to compare to actual gold. And that's how they would know how much the gold was valued. In the middle is one of the most important pieces. This is the Sankofa bird. And the Sankofa bird is uh, also a, 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 a Ghanaian symbol. And it means that uh, to know where you're going, you have to have uh, know where you've been. So the bird flies forward, but looks back. Also in here, we have a piece from, uh, this is from Haiti. So this is a, a, a bag, a purse made in Haiti. And this piece here is from Cote d'Ivoire. It's a replica of a dancer uh, in Cote d'Ivoire. So the last box here is all about Kemet, or Egypt, as the Greeks called it. And you have two, uh, you have a vase and a statue of Tut Ankhamon, who is also known as King Tut. And then we have a replica of the Rosetta Stone, which is how they learn how to translate uh, the ancient Kemetic script uh, so that people could know, understand what it was. So this is written in three languages on here. All right, now we're going to tour a few more things in the Institute. Some of the things we looked at in that short video clip, we're gonna come back to. But now, uh, stay with me, and we're going to be right here inside the Institute. Now, this piece that you're looking at right now, this is a Yoruba piece uh, from Nigeria, and this is the Epa mask. Now, the Epa mask, uh, this is here from a celebration that really goes back before the 1800s, and the Yoruba people, uh, use these, and this is uh, uh, from the Oloko, which was called the Lord of the Farm. So these are different types of masks that were used by folks uh, during different types of war sometimes. Uh, but they, you know, the, these, this is like a helmet mask. And so this someone would actually put this on their, their head as they're going through the process of displaying and sharing what that is. Uh, uh, the, the, sometimes there's other pieces to it that may have raffia, um, and they have <clears throat> a fabric that goes on them and it would most of the time cover the entire body. But this is here you can see is a mask that goes on someone's head. Now, um, one of the most important things about the, uh, the thing you'll see here is that we have, we have lots of drums in the Africana Institute. And so you'll see a typical djembe here. Uh, and then next to the djembe, we have this uh, beautiful drum that I got when I was in South Africa. Uh, this drum, drum, you'll see on the top, it used to have uh, a hair or fur on it from a, a, a cow. Uh, the, this, they, they used a, a cow skin on this one. It's a thick skin. Most of the drums use goat skin, but this one it has, a, has a, a cow skin on it. Uh, so it's very thick, but uh, uh, so that the sound is very different. Um, and it's not, uh, the, it doesn't resonate in the same way that a, a, a goat skin drum would do. Uh, but the, also, this is very colorful. So this drum, uh, I got this when I was in uh, Burkina Faso. I'm sorry, no, not when I was in Burkina Faso. I got this when I was in Botswana. Uh, I got this drum. I got a couple of drums when I was in Botswana uh, back in the 1990s and uh, 95 to be exact. Uh, so that's where, where that came from. Uh, next to that, we have... Uh, really a really interesting uh, basket. These are the ones from Burkina Faso. Uh, now, if you watch this, this these are nested uh, baskets and each one inside of another and uh, really fabulous. Uh, this piece here uh, was uh, uh, donated by Paul Rosenberg and Edith Freeman. Uh, this as well as the mask that we saw is in the, the donation group that they, that they donated. Uh, but that this this a uh, uh, mask. I mean, this this basket here from Burkina Faso uh, is made of leather, and um, you know it, it's interesting because uh, when you look at the the nested nature of it, one could suspect that uh, that you know you might have a, a nested basket like this that shows uh, the the layers of of either wealth or that there's different things that people are given and that what might might or might not be stored in that basket. Uh, so, you know, that's a, a, an interesting piece. Uh, moving on here, we have a, uh, another um, piece. This one is also uh, uh, from Central Africa. This was from former Zaire, right now Burkina Faso, obviously. Uh, this 
uh, particular staff here. Uh, it's actually the only staff that we have here in, in the office. Uh, <clears throat> but this came from the Washington Gallery in 1985. Uh, it's from the, uh, uh, the Congo, which is, you know, uh, the, the largest uh, uh, area on the continent. And what you have in, uh, well, not the largest, but one of the largest countries in the continent. But one of the, the, the most remarkable things about the Congo is that it has most of the uh, resources. There is really not a, you know, almost nothing you can't find in terms of resources, uh, natural resources in a Democratic Republic of the Congo. Uh, so this is a, a, a Yombe staff, a chief staff, um, and it's called a Mbo, M, Mba, Wala, Mba Wala staff. Uh, and obviously the staff in Africa, it uh, doesn't matter where if it, it is, if it's in Ghana or Nigeria or uh, in the Congo, they're all, they're symbols of authority. And so this is the authority uh, of the chief. And so this particular one though has, uh, topped with a female figure, a maternity figure on it, called a Pemba. And so, uh, you know, the, the important, it, it, this demonstrated the importance of women in the society. So, uh, you know, you have different things, you have different ideas about things. And sometimes we get uh, misconceptualizations. We get misconceptualizations about how uh, different societies portray or look at things. And someone may think that, that only men are, are featured in a society, but you go throughout the African continent, you see there's lots of different ways that, that folks are, are uh, that you have both male and female uh, figures that are, uh, who are uh, seen as important. And we, we bring value to that in terms of our understanding. And this gives a good example, it's a good time for us to pivot and uh, take a quick look over here. Uh, it's something that's at the center of the table. And this piece here, you know, I always love these. I've bought several of these over the years. Uh, this particular one is, is, is one that belongs to the Africana Institute, but I have another one in my office. I've had several of them at home uh, and I've had them that are made of wood and that are made of, 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 of uh, uh, stone. And so the carvers of these, if you were to, if you were to, if you were to, to, to see that you pick one of these up, uh, you'll see that this is a single piece of wood and this represents unity. And so that the unity that this represents is that, uh, that you know, that you have five different heads uh, within this. But the, the point is, is that, that as the, the, these pieces hold things together, you could put a bowl in here, you could put a, a table top on top, lots of different things you could do. But what you recognize is that uh, the strength comes in their unity and that, uh, that the, the carver of this took a single piece of wood uh, and, and, and made these five different things out of it. So if you can think about the, the possibility, I can't even figure out how they would do that, but, the, but when you see it and it's done out of stone, out of wood, uh, you understand the, the level of artistry, the level of uh, ingenious that the folks who did these things, how they were able to do it in a, a fashion that we may not be able to figure out how we do uh, today. So we're gonna keep moving. Uh, and now uh, we're going to move and look at a, a, another figure, and this one here uh, is a is a really a, a fabulous uh, piece. Of when uh, 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 Paul was asking me, uh, well, you know, you want to, uh, what do you think about this? And I was like, oh yeah, we need, we got to have this. This is a, a a piece that that I think that is a, a, a fabulous, and um, this is a piece, a, a female figure uh, from the Edo people in Nigeria. Uh, and so that this uh, uh, piece in terms of you look at it, some of the uh, facial markings and obviously you can see that it's a woman, uh, but the different things. And, and if you look, if you look closely at the top, you'll see that there had to be have been other things on here before uh, that there was probably once again, some raffia or other kinds of uh, uh, adornments on the, on the head piece here. Uh, but you can see the antiquity, the age of the piece uh, it's it's a, it's, a, it's a very old piece, um, and it you know just it, it's been able to uh, weather well, <laughs> if you will. Uh, some of the the coloring on it is from uh, chalk, and so then you see that there's a, uh, a a necklace on here, and that this you know this this female this female carving uh, is a is a a really beautiful piece, something that that uh, we're thankful to have here. 
uh, here at the Institute. Um, here also another piece that represents uh, fertility and procreation. So that gives you a, another good sense of, of some of the things that, uh, that we have here. We're gonna uh, move on over here uh, to this uh, uh, really intriguing looking piece. It's called a, a, a warthog mask. Uh, and this is from uh, either Cote de Devoir or Ivory Coast. Uh, and so then, you know, if you think about the warthog, warthog is a kind of a formidable animal. And uh, many of the masks and the artifacts you find in the continent, uh, you'll understand that what they're telling you is that the elements about the, 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 the mask uh, represent what the, the energy or the spirit uh, behind which that was. So some of the masks were, uh, their, their importance had to do something with uh, regard to um, oh, what that specific uh, element was or what was going on in that, in that, in that, that community at that time. Uh, uh, but these were all things that were worn. So this mask here, on the back, you'll see that there's slots for eyes, uh, and there might have been a full dress that went with this uh, to to obfuscate the body of the person. Uh, but you know, the the warthog uh, is just is just the this is um, you know uh, would be would have gone with the the Mende folks, right? And so uh, there's a lot of things that we know we find that we find out that that there's everything is not exposed. So you know you wouldn't learn everything about it. In some museum, you may hear lots of things, but unless sometimes if you're not initiated into a system that you wouldn't know all the things about it. So uh, some of these things we're gonna see or later on uh, deal with age grades and, and the, how the kind of initiations happen then and what people went through at those times. So uh, that now um, I wanna talk a little bit about this, this painting that we have here. Uh, this is a painting uh, that's done by a, a, a faculty member here, uh, uh, Professor Saeed, um, and he's from uh, um, the he says the Nubian people, and uh, well, which is where today present day Sudan is, and he's uh, he teaches art here on campus, but he's done. We've had an exhibition for him, and I bought this piece from him, and he works in watercolors. And what he says though is that when we think about art, is that uh, that everything is art. And the clothes that you wear, uh, the uh, ways in which the, the building is designed, uh, the, the things that you put together. So it doesn't just have to be a painting, he says, that he like he paints or the sculptures that we've seen thus far. He wants us to understand that, that getting into art uh, is, is uh, the way you think is art. And so we need to make sure that we're, we're, we're in tune with that. And uh, this piece here though, that he does, so many, he did, we have, he had lots and lots of pieces that are similar to this one, uh, but he wanted us to understand that uh, here we have um, uh, uh, depictions of the sand and the desert, right? And that the beauty that it has there, and sometimes people may have mis uh, misunderstandings and misimpressions about it, but uh, what he wants you to understand is that no, uh, that, 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 that the people are, 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 are beautiful and and the replications of, of, of who and what they are are beautiful if we in fact learn to love who and what they are. Now, when the Africana Institute was opened in 2001, uh, it was, we had the, the, I wasn't here at the time, uh, but we had the beautiful uh, uh, pageantry of the Asante Hene. Uh, and so that when the Asante Hene came, um, one of the things that they donated, what he and his entourage donated was this beautiful piece of Royal uh, Kente. And you can see this is uh, 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 beautifully woven and uh, the quality is exceptional. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited that we're able to display it and we display it in, in, in time. So sometimes we, we, we put it away, other times we, uh, you know, because we don't want it exposed all the time. Uh, so I have other uh, fabrics that we bring out uh, that, ha that have uh, important significances uh, that we have uh, a dinkra cloth, uh, lots of different types of fabric uh, that we have from different parts of the continent. Uh, in fact, we did a whole uh, exhibition, ex ex uh, uh, ex exhibition on fabrics uh, of Africa. And that was a really a fabulous time. We had so many different fabrics from so many different places. And it was it was a, a an opportunity for us to 
to really think about uh, what the um, what what the fabrics of Africa were and what they looked like. Uh, we're going to keep moving now, though, uh, and we're going to uh, take a quick look at this this drum here. Uh, this drum, as a matter of fact, maybe uh, I, my first my, my my beautiful daughter Azika. Uh, oh, she she always mess up. <laughs> Tia is here and she's uh, doing the, the videography for me. So thank you. Uh, I have another daughter named Aziza and, and she said, and I said her name. So I, I always do that. She, 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 she doesn't like it too much, but uh, forgive me. <laughs> but this is another, uh, this is a cow skin. Uh, so this, is a, this, is a, this, is a, this drum has a very different type of resonance than say a djembe. Uh, this particular drum here is uh, uh, from Guinea. And so uh, we're uh, very thankful that uh, uh, Marcy Phillips, uh, who was uh, a part of the African Commission here in Newark, uh, ha had given us this on long-term loan. So we, 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 it's been here for many, many years now. Uh, the group that performed uh, here at the Institute, they, uh, they, they performed, and this was the drum that they used when they performed. And uh, we kept it here for them after their performance, and it's been here ever since. So we actually were very appreciative uh, that we have the ability to, to, to display and share uh, this historic uh, instrument here with us. You know, we also have other kinds of things that get uh, uh, donated to the Institute. Uh, so for instance here, uh, a friend of ours, Robert Taylor uh, from East Orange, uh, donated this picture here. He has an amazing collection of African artwork, uh, but this particular piece here uh, is a, a, a Puna mask and, um, and a, a, a the Guinness statue. And so these are things that, that are in his office, uh, but he had this, uh, this, great, this really great picture taken and um, that we, we've been able to, uh, we've had that. So maybe one day he'll, he'll give us one of these beautiful pieces as well and we'll keep it rolling. <laughs> uh, we have a couple more drums here I wanna show you. Um, one is the, uh, uh, the, the first one is, is the Jun Jun. Well, these are both Jun Juns. So then you would also have the, you know, you'd have the three, three of them, typically a smaller one, a big one. So you have the mother, the father, and the baby, right? So, and then they always come with a bell. So, you know, we, we, we have lots of, uh, we have a, every year uh, outside of the pandemic, uh, we've had the Pan-African Drum Fest. And that's been going on since I was the first, my first year here in 2000. And the first year I became the, the, the director, as a matter of fact, that very summer, we had the uh, Pan-African Drum Fest and that was 2006 and 2007. So we've been doing it ever since. Uh, right behind that though is a beautiful uh, uh, Kuba mask from the Congo, uh, the Kuba Bawoom mask. Uh, this was donated, this was in a, it used to be part of a movie set. Uh, but it was, but it's an actual uh, mask, and and here, uh, uh, this one here is also similar to a helmet. Uh, but the the artistry on this is is absolutely amazing, and uh, we you know we're we're excited that this piece is here. When it when it came in, uh, it was uh, everything we expected and more, and so um, it it just it, it adds a, a great contribution to 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 the institute. A little more light there will we'll shine light on it and make, help us to see it uh, in, a, in a very dramatic way. So uh, we didn't actually show, we have these, uh, these, um, these, these hats here. <laughs> I figure I might as well put one on so you can see it. Uh, this is from Lesotho. And so in Lesotho, uh, which is a mountain kingdom, uh, they oftentimes wear these and you'll see people wearing these in, in South Africa. Uh, but they make these and they're really uh, beautiful hats. And uh, the former uh, assistant director of the Africana Institute uh, had donated several of these, uh, Brother Lefe Milani. Uh, uh, no, no, Lefe Milani is somebody I went to school with. Uh, we <laughs> uh, I'm getting all these names mixed up as we go on through this tour. Um, uh, Valile, uh, Brother Valile was the, was the uh, uh, my former uh, director. Uh, now, this is another piece of, a personal piece of mine. This is a, an old, old map of Africa uh, that was on fabric. So these are clothing fabric 
that would have someone would have been had wrapped on or something. But uh, I thought it was so beautiful. This was back from 1980 something. Uh, so yeah, this was from the 80s. So you, if you look on the top, I'm up here. If you look at the top right here, uh, you'll see that it, you'll you'll know that this is even when the name Zaire was still there, right? Uh, so this was uh, a, a much older map. And then you'll see also when you look at Sudan, uh, obviously there's not Sudan and South Sudan, so therefore it was no, uh, uh, it wasn't divided up in that way. So you know, you, we, we, this the, these kinds of of things uh, are important uh, historically and culturally. And so what I did was I made sure that we kept a copy of this, and I said, well, you know, the best way to actually display it is to frame it. I'm trying to stay out of the shadow. Uh, and so as we as we frame it. Uh, you, you know, it gets a, a, gives it a, a different type of a life. Um, now, uh, we have a, a, a piece here that's not a, uh, your typical piece that you might find here, but I, I put this piece up here. Uh, this is a timeline of African history and culture and just kind of, uh, just to kind of go through it real quick. You see that it's a very long timeline right? And it goes from the past all the way up into the future. And the reason I put this here, this is a brother in, uh, from England who put this together. And I think he did a great job. Uh, what he does is he tries to show uh, ancient African history and culture up to the present. And one of the pieces here that a lot of us are not familiar with is uh, uh, this here. And that is the, um, the images of the Ishango bone. Right, and so the Ashango bone is about 25,000 years old. And so that was an old relic that people used to, to, uh, in Africa to uh, do mathematical calculations. Uh, they say that it was primarily used for the, um, uh, uh, the calculation of the, the lunar cycle. And so uh, we may have had women who have been the first mathematicians uh, 25,000 years ago. Uh, but we just don't don't think of it that way because uh, we're using a, a different a different group's uh, uh, narrative about time, right? About math, and and uh, we also see on here the uh, uh, the pyramids in here that were built by Imhotep, right? That first step pyramid. And so when we think about the math again, you think about Pythagoras uh, and the Pythagoras theorem. Well, it wasn't Pythagoras who came up with the Pythagoras theorem. It actually, I would say, is more akin to Kemetic theorem number 22, uh, which means that, uh, that there were ancient Egyptians or Kemites who came up with the idea of uh, using a, a, an equation to calculate the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. And that's how they made sure the pyramids were built properly. Uh, so uh, we're gonna keep moving on. We got a lot of stuff in here. We're not gonna go over every single piece, uh, but we're gonna try to cover a lot of them. Uh, here is a, uh, a piece that was from, uh, what well, was here before I came here. Uh, uh, so I don't know exact origins of it, but it looks very similar to a lot of artwork that I've had, that I've seen uh, from Haiti. Uh, and so, you know, you have a, a, a kind of a, a village setting uh, where you have people who are workers and uh, out going out to do um, uh, agricultural work. So, you know, some beautiful stuff that we see uh, going on. Now, uh, the last, this, we're in a conference room right now. So this is the last piece you're going to see in the conference room. Uh, this is a, a, a piece of uh, mother and child uh, of the Ashanti in Ghana, right? Uh, this is a, a, a polychrome incised wood piece uh, from uh, the Washington Gallery again. And uh, it was, I was, guess it was acquired in 86. Uh, maternity figure embodies various concepts of the Ashanti people. Primarily, it's, it is a statement of the importance of lineage, uh, the continuity of family, a highly decorated uh, armchair with its uh, warrior references and emblem of the golden stool uh, suggests that the function of the figure was used in a shrine. So, you know, these are all the kind of beautiful things that you see in the process when you're uh, coming to a place like the Africana Institute. And what we want you to do is that we want to just be able to, we want you to be able to just come to the Institute 
and, and see that there's lots of stuff that you can check out. Uh, so now we're going to take the last piece in the Institute and you'll get to see right here before we go to the last piece, let me just kind of zoom out here and you can see this is the conference room. Uh, we do lots of different types of events in here and uh, you know, we'll have uh, uh, both uh, workshops and uh, small lectures and we put a screen up and we have uh, 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 videos or, 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 or movies in here, documentaries primarily and we have discussions about those things. Um, so uh, the, the last thing we're going to look at is this, uh, this headrest, this uh, Sanofo headrest from, um, from Cote d'Ivoire. And so then uh, this piece here, uh, you know, if you think about it, this is a, 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 an amazing kind of piece to me uh, that, that you look at and you see uh, that, wow, this is a headrest. Uh, uh, and you know, it's not just in Africa, but lots of places. You go to Asia, they have headrests that are like these made out of wood and other kinds of things. And um, you know, that these uh, uh, headrests are, uh, some of them were made of, of, of wood, some of them made of stone, uh, made of lots of different types of items. Uh, but this particular one has a hook to hang in, it has some, some beadwork on it, a uh, really fascinating piece. And I just think that, that you know, when you get to see all of these different things, it helps you to uh, think about what the, the, the people of these areas, uh, what they brought to the table. And you, know, you get this idea that people are uh, uh, primitive or uh, ill-informed, but you know, they make these things that have uh, utilitarian purposes, uh, but they also have uh, both spiritual and um, uh, uh, beauty, right? So that the, 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 we have to look at all the different ac uh, access points for it and the whys and the hows. Uh, so um, we're gonna take a, about a, a, a two second break there. And then we're gonna be back. We're gonna get ready to go outside, uh, <clears throat> but we're gonna right now uh, transition into uh, the main part of the, of the conference room. All right, so now we're in the front part of the Africana Institute. One of the things here is that, uh, and if you come to the Africana Institute, you know I have a present for you first and foremost. Uh, if you see this beautiful pillar here, uh, this pillar I say to you is three uh, different uh, strokes and eras of African art all in one piece. First of all, we start at the bottom. And at the very bottom, we have replicas of San rock art. So the San were the people in Southern Africa who've been there for thousands of years, right? So the San rock art is at least uh, 20 to 30,000 years old. And the interesting part, and I talked to my students about this the other day, is that the, the brothers and sisters in, on, in, in, uh, uh, the, of, the, of the San, that they understood pigments in such a way that they were able to get red ochre and, and, and clay and chalk and, and charcoal and other means of, of inscribing things on the walls that lasted 20, 30,000 years. They're still there to this day. Now, some people have defaced some and other things, but the essence of them are still there. What things are we doing today? Is your common pen today, would it last 30,000 years? Would your uh, uh, your pencil that you're using today lasts 30,000 years? Would it last 100 years? Uh, so what did they do? What did they know that we don't know that enabled them their things to last that long? These are the kind of questions we have to ask. Um, now, the other part of this pillar is this is a, a replica of a, a traditional comedic pillar or Egyptian pillar. You'll see at the top, we have the lotus uh, and that that lotus uh, is just gives you an opportunity to kind of see uh, that the, that's what this was representing. Uh, that the in fact, I had someone the other day say to me that that the the pillar itself uh, may have represented the lotus, right? So that the the pillar uh, coming up out of the because the lotus flower, if you think about it, uh, that its its roots uh, and it's at the bottom of the of the uh, of the Nile, uh, but the stem or, or even at lakes. The stem goes all the way up to the top. And so you have a long, long stem from the bottom 
up to the top. So that's how the, 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 the lotus plant is. And so then we have uh, uh, Ramesses and Hathor here. We have the, the Sphinx. We have uh, uh, Queen Hepshetzut's temple on the side. And then it says revitalizing, reconnecting. And if we stroll all the way around, it has the whole Africana Institute motto, strengthening African cultural and social, uh, 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 it, it, so, social and intellectual heritage. And so these are the kind of things we want you to understand that this is the Institute is about. Now, on the side here though, uh, one of the things that's really, really fascinating is this image that we see here. And this brother here that we see, uh, this is a replica, but this is Yanga. Now, Yanga was a warrior in uh, Mexico. And in Mexico, uh, he, was, he and others were enslaved by the Spanish. And they fought the Spanish. And during their fight, they became Maroons. And so when they became Maroons, uh, what they were uh, trying to do, and they 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 they, they were uh, fighting, and and the um, uh, the Spanish couldn't capture them, and so since the Spanish couldn't capture and defeat them, uh, they made peace with them, and then uh, uh, ultimately there's a city to this very day named after Yanga, so it's Yanga, Mexico, and a, this a statue this like this sits in the middle of the city. So that's why we have it here. Now you'll see in the window of the African S2, we have the uh, Kwanzaa candles. Uh, we keep them there 365 days a year because Kwanzaa and the Kwanzaa principles are not just for uh, Kwanzaa in December, but they are relevant and uh, uh, all, all throughout the time so that uh, the red represents, these are, Marcus Garvey came up with this color configuration. Red represents the blood, the black represents the people and green represents the wealth in the land. And so then each of these have a, are one of the representatives of the principles of Kwanzaa, which are principles we should be working towards throughout the year. Uh, unity, uh, um, uh, self-determination, um, collective work and responsibility, uh, cooperative economics, uh, faith, um, purpose, uh, creativity, right? So these are all these principles and they're not just important during Kwanzaa, they're important every single day. So that's why we, we, we uh, keep the candles, this, this, this pillar up the entire time. Uh, just one other thing here we wanna just uh, show and that is that we have uh, another uh, example of a fertility doll here. Uh, this is again from the Ashanti in Ghana. Uh, the fertility dolls, you know, women may have them to, to encourage uh, childbirth. Uh, so, you know, this, these, all, all these different pieces that we have here are important uh, pieces to help us to understand uh, how other people reflect upon and celebrate uh, history and culture. And, uh, and so we will we'll take that as what it is. Now, uh, one other thing that you'll see as we walk around the institute here uh, is that um, uh, you know it, it, when you when a, when a person comes in the front door uh, and sees the the, the reception area, uh, we also have uh, over here on the side. This is also uh, when the Asante Hini came. Uh, this is the uh, a stool uh, that, and you can see the top of the the stool that uh, um, here, too much shadow. The, the stool here was donated by the Asantehini and uh, really it's a beautiful piece here. Um, and we're, we're glad that, that we, we have the opportunity to, to have that as a kind of a, a cultural piece here. Uh, this male figure, this male figure here, hit it from the side. Uh, this male figure here is from uh, uh, the Congo uh, of, of the Hemba people. And uh, it's a portrayal of an ancestral figure called, uh, Sing, uh, sing, singiti, uh, and so then a lot of times people might keep these in their personal uh, huts or other places, and that's something that we want to just kind of uh, another piece that we have here that that shows the history and culture of different folks uh, from different parts of the continent. Um, now, if you pan over this way, uh, like two or three other pieces here, want to see? Just kind of quickly come over here. 
to the uh, to the scoop. Uh, you know, uh, part of the thing is that when you see something that's that's um, uh, that you see something that's um, uh, really uh, uh, done well, and um, you know, we can look at the sides of this and the back. I really want to display the back side of this because uh, I think that it's uh, uh, really remarkable in terms of the workmanship here. Uh, this is a, a Dan scoop uh, of the, the Dan people. Uh, and, you know, the, uh, this wooden scoop is highly decorated with a reptile uh, a look on it uh, or a piece on the, on the back. Um, and it's used for, for grains and other things, but also might have been employed in uh, spiritual, uh, 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 different types of spiritual um, um, uh, practices. And, you know, we, we admire the fact that, that folks uh, take the, took the level of time and effort. Uh, if you look at the, the handle on it uh, and the, the artistry on the handle is just uh, uh, amazing. Now, while we're here, um, I'm gonna go to the other side of this piece here. Uh, and you can move here. Um, and I want to just take a, a, a moment to talk about uh, the the um, this is the logo for the Africana Institute here, right? And this is actually for for an image that I, I created many many years ago back in the '80s, uh, and it's called Original Roots. And so uh, I had somebody kind of fashion a, a logo uh, from it, uh, but basically it's saying the roots of the world are in Africa and the roots of Africa are in the world. So I have uh, roots in both sides going up and down uh, just to kind of uh, put a different take on it uh, because I think that that's a, a, a much richer uh, explanation of what it is that the African Institute is about and that really the world itself is about. Uh, there's a, a, a local artist, a brother named Bernard who did an amazing piece uh, and this piece is here is, is on loan from uh, a former professor here who retired recently, Professor Linda Carter. Uh, but he did these pieces um, probably in the 90s. And, um, you know, this was a particular piece here that uh, had kind of a dignified face of somebody who was in bondage on a, on a, on a, in a ship of enslavement. Um, uh, war prisoners uh, uh, ship, as I call it, war prisoners. Um, you know, and, but, and right next to that, though, uh, to the left of that, uh, you'll see uh, this uh, this piece here. I guess I'll like uh, this is a a really really piece, a, a beautiful piece. I like uh, this. I acquired this when I was in Cuba, and uh, we took a group of students to Cuba. And I believe it was 2017 or 2018. And the uh, this drummer, uh, you know, the, that you see the one of the interesting pieces about the way they did it is that this design uh, they make it so each of the pieces come apart, and so that uh, it transports easily. Uh, the pieces connect, re reconnect, and disconnect. Uh, it's really remarkable how they came up with it, and the way in which. They, uh, they, they have cuts in the wood to give shadow, to show depth and, and uh, uh, the, the depth of both the face and the clothing. Uh, but then the painting is not just on where the, the depth is, the depth shows the, uh, of, the, of the carvings have their own uh, shadows that they cast, uh, which is really an intriguing piece of uh, the way they did it. Now, uh, I wanna spend time uh, going over this piece here. I really like this piece a lot. Uh, this is a, uh, a piece from B Burkina Faso, and this is uh, uh, the, the Boa people, uh, and this is called a plank mask, and uh, only those villagers in the southern area of uh, the, bo uh, the Boni, or the Sons, the, the, the Dosi, and the uh, Pa tend to use these spectacular masks, which are danced from early March to May. Uh, they are brought out during the rain season and at uh, initiation rites. Uh, so, you know, if you can imagine that uh, behind here where my hand is, is where somebody's face would go. And then this six feet above that would be above 
uh, this six feet above that would be where somebody's um, would be where 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 somebody's uh, above somebody's head. So they would hold on to this piece here. And there probably would be fabric and or raffia tied to their bodies. But all of this here, um, all of this here from here above would be above their head, right? Uh, so, you know, kind of fascinating uh, 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 things to, to look at and see. Um, we have lots of other things uh, that are here. Uh, we're not gonna go over all of them, but we're also gonna spend some time going over uh, some of the things that, that you're gonna see uh, on the hallway during that video clip, we're gonna uh, pass by and talk about a couple of things that were not, um, uh, that we, we didn't mention in, in, the, in that video, but wanna just uh, give you some insight to them. Uh, this particular mask here is uh, an animal mask from Upper Volta, uh, which is also a fossil, uh, that these masks are, are always used for dancing and, this particular one, it says it was for the during the dry ritual uh, by the, the Bobo people. Uh, so it invoked the spirit of, of nature. Uh, so that, that's one of the things that they would do. Uh, you, you, before you saw the warthog mask, and um, now what you're gonna see is the baboon mask. So the, uh, uh, the baboon mask is for the Don people uh, and <clears throat> Uh, they are divided in either male or female groupings, uh, but they, you know, the, these masks, you see a uh, very intense, almost like a helmet looking uh, uh, structure. As a matter of fact, it looks like blinders that a horse might wear uh, that they have in terms of its construct here. And then the eyes are right in the center that the person would, would look through. I myself do a little bit of art and you'll see some of my own artwork here. Uh, so this, uh, this uh, uh, mirror here is something that I fashioned. Uh, you'll see there's a few masks on it. Um, and then, um, then I put all this, this copper work and, and cowrie shells uh, just to uh, elucidate some things. But I have things from different parts of the continent, uh, some from uh, Botswana, some from... Uh, 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 from uh, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, some from, uh, what's the other place that I have some stuff from? Oh, from, from Kemet. Uh, so yeah, so there's several different things that we have there. Uh, last thing we're gonna look at out here is, um, is this mask here, or this sculpture here. This is another sculpture I did. It's a, um, a piece that I did that is uh, of the, uh, I got the idea in part in terms of the carved out eyes, from many of the African ad masks. In fact, when I was doing the piece, uh, some people didn't understand why I carved the eyes out. Uh, they were wondering, what is going on? Why, why did you take, why is there no eyes uh, in here? Why are there holes for the eyes? And I said, well, uh, this is a, uh, I'm doing this as part of the way in which a lot of uh, traditional African art might have been done. And so this is a, it's a, a, a ceramic piece, but it has an antique bronze glaze on it. All right, well, we're back to the office and uh, well, my office in the office. Uh, uh, and so uh, I, I'm uh, hoping that you've enjoyed what you've seen uh, thus far. Uh, we have a, a couple of more things we're going to, uh, to, to, to look at before we, we kind of close out here. I see we have a, uh, over 30 people here now. So I'm glad that you all are here. And uh, let me just kind of uh, check out some of the comments that we've had from different people see if there's anything I need to uh, attend to while we're here. No, no, nothing, nothing pressing here. Uh, well, we're glad that, that you all are here. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, that there's it's been a, a wonderful uh, 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 time for uh, us to kind of, uh, uh, to really uh, see that these things are, are uh, are done well, and that that everyone has had an opportunity to um, to to see some of the things that 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 have really kind of gone into uh, the makeup of this, and you know that when we look at at the 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 work here, you see is that there's you know pieces that come from uh, lots of different places on the continent, 
when we go back outside, you'll see that uh, I spent a little more time to talk about some of the pieces. In fact, maybe I'll have an opportunity to just kind of pull them up here on the screen and then we can go over and talk about them uh, while they're, while you get to look at them. So uh, let me do it that way. And then you all can uh, take a closer look at a few of these pieces uh, that we're, we're uh, displaying. These are the, some of these that you, you um, well, let me just go back. So give me two seconds and, uh, and then we'll, we'll put our, our, and I'll take any uh, kind of comments or questions uh, momentarily also. John Smith, I see you had a, a question. Uh, so uh, feel free to ask your question. Uh, I'll uh, there you go, send you to go uh, mute, turn off. So if you got a question, feel free to ask, John. Thank you, Dr. Akil. How are you? How's everyone? I'm doing well, thank you. Good. Uh, Doc, you, you started off this uh, tour by, by talking about Pan-Africanism. Uh, if if I were to talk to the African students in my in my classes uh, in reference to what is the concept behind Pan Africanism, would they understand? Could you under, Could you explain what Pan Africanism is and the concept behind Pan Africanism? Sure, sure, I could definitely do that. Uh, I mean, in fact, I just came back from Burkina Faso, did a lecture on Pan Africanism. Uh, so uh, I think that when you think about uh, Pan-Africanism, uh, that uh, basically uh, that's a, 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 a place for us to think about the, uh, the, how we bring about unification of people of African descent under a, a unified kind of idea about what it means to be African, right? And that uh, one is that there isn't any one uh, idea of Af being African, but there's multiple ideas of being African, uh, but we can uh, find the similar threads uh, through which. So like if we look at uh, food, we see that there's similar foods. We look at uh, uh, name grades, uh, um, uh, that is when people go through age grades, uh, through uh, initiation processes that you see similarities there. And so we can, we have to search for and find the things and places where we have similarities and we can build on those things uh, as opposed to always looking for the things that are in contrast or in opposition. So those are some of the things that we have to, I think, uh, think about and uh, uh, provide uh, space, depth and breadth for other folks to, to experience and participate. Uh, when you think about Pan-Africanism, you, you, know, you look at who were the great Pan-Africanists, Garvey, Nkrumah, uh, uh, Thomas Sankara, uh, Marcus Garvey, uh, W.E.B. Du Bois, um, 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 Malcolm X. Uh, so these are folks who are uh, thinking about ways to unify people of African descent and finding uh, ways to push the envelope to create space for them to, to, to not only to talk about being unified, but to move in the direction of unification. So uh, those gave us some, some, some important uh, ways and places that we could uh, create space for other people to participate in, in something that we maybe we didn't fully understand. Um, and when we think about it that way, then I think we have another set of, um, uh, of, of really kind of uh, values um, for us to, to, to look at in terms of the, uh, what Pan-Africanism is, right? That, that, that strong, uh, uh, unconditional desire to bring people together to, help us to move beyond the, the challenges of, of, of oppression, right? The, the things, uh, the reasons why people talked about uh, uh, coming together under, under those conditions is because we experienced different types of oppression and that, that when, when you have those kinds of experiences, then you, know, you, you look for ways to, to overcome those things and, and, and having unity is a, a strong way to do so. I hope that answered your question. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so I want to take a, a, a moment to kind of uh, uh, just mention uh, some of the things that are um, uh, that we had that are on the um, uh, 
that were on the uh, the other part of the tour, we recorded some. And I want to thank uh, Professor Wager and her uh, her two students who were an important part of uh, of that thing uh, of of us uh, doing that. Um, so uh, one of those uh, uh, things that they did was to to take pictures of everything. And so that was the Art Club uh, 360 and uh, uh, Alendi and uh, Jonique. Uh, so Professor Wager, thank you for bringing your students uh, to help us in that regard. Uh, we mentioned some of the other folks who made some donations to the uh, Institute. And I want to also uh, uh, mention to, to go back and thank uh, Paul Rosenberg, Brett Harris, uh, Professor Enid Freeman and uh, the African objects uh, from the estate of Edith Chiki Rosenberg, uh, that they all gave uh, 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 substantial contributions. And we are appreciative of, of them making those contributions because that, you know, all those things collectively make our exhibition what they are, right? So that, that uh, you know, when we have people who uh, value the things that 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 we do, and you know, I'm a I'm a steward, right? I'm a steward of the things. Uh, the there's some of these things are mine, but others I'm the caretaker of, and so I I take a, a, a great uh, um, uh, honor in being charged with the responsibility of taking good care of them and and uh, uh, being able to portray them and and display them. Uh, to you all as we're as we're uh, here at the institute, and you know these are uh, these things are here for you to to come and see. So the the art in nine boxes is something that is is up. It will be up for the next uh, for March and maybe part of April. Uh, so you can come to the college and actually visit and check these things out, and you get your firsthand experience of what these what these items are and uh, what what you know what you can. Yeah, it's very different when you're seeing it in person than when you're uh, kind of looking at it from a distance. So I really encourage you to to come and and spend some time and and look at the things yourself uh, because I think you'll get a very different experience. Uh, I'm going to show you a, a couple of pieces now um, that we we showed before, but I want to go back to. And so here's the first one: uh, War Helmet from Ghana. A sweet grass basket from down South Carolina and some other African artifacts we'll talk about on Friday. Okay, so here we are on Friday and we're, I wanna just spend a moment here to kind of talk about this piece here. Uh, I think this piece, I, I, I really like this piece here. This is another one. Uh, that was uh, donated by uh, Paul Rosenberg and Enid Freeman. Um, and this is a, uh, a piece here. This is a from uh, Cote d'Ivoire, uh, but this is a, a, a spirit uh, spouse uh, uh, statue, the, the Wakasona. Uh, and Wakasona means wooden people and refers to the spouse, spouses from the spirit world. Uh, this uh, statue would have been commissioned by a, a, a boule a uh, woman who was to have, was having problems such as fertility or uh, marriage discord, who was, uh, and, and these things would have been used as somebody would have had this in their house, you know, it would have rubbed oil on it or uh, uh, kind of put dishes by it. So, you know, these are things that, that, that people use in, in different ways, uh, but, you know, it's, it's repli indicative of some of the, 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 the beauty uh, of the, the, the workmanship. And we're just uh, grateful to have this piece in, in the collection. Uh, that sweet grass basket right there, uh, you know, this, that's a, a typical uh, uh, basket work that's done in South Carolina. This is just the top of the basket. Uh, obviously the whole basket wouldn't fit in the, in the panel, uh, but I wanted to just be able to show that that there's these linkages. You see these baskets that are made in Africa, uh, but similar types of things are made here. And so the sweet grass baskets come from the folks who used to grow rice, the Gullah and Geechee folks. It's a Gullah Geechee festival that happens every, I think it's in May of every year uh, down in South Carolina. And so then you see these items and it gives you some great insight to 
uh, the continuity of the cultural thread that ran from the continent uh, to African people in the, in the Americas. Uh, and see the xylophone, there's a, a small djembe. And you know, this interesting, this, this, this uh, war helmet here, uh, you know, when I first saw it, I was like, well, I, was, I was puzzled. And um, this was the, during a the trip when we went to, to Ghana. And um, you know, when people see it, they usually think that it's something from uh, the, uh, uh, the um, is not the, is the Vulcans? No, the Vikings, yes, 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 the Vikings. Uh, and, and so, uh, not the Vulcans. <laughs> we might we be looking for it in, in space times for that. Uh, but the Vikings, uh, when you see it, but, but actually the, we have a, a professor here who talks about the black Vikings. And he says that Vikings actually never wore helmets like this. Uh, that there's no uh, real archaeological evidence of that, and but 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 in Ghana, the northern in northern Ghana uh, around Paga, uh, that that you see these, and I bought this when I was there, uh, and so both the um, the the arrows that you see uh, uh, in the in the pouch over here to the to the left, as well as this war helmet. If you see it, the, the war helmet. If you if I was to take it out and you saw the full run of it. It has a long uh, leather strip that goes down the back and one that goes over the center of the face, over the nose and, and over the ears. So it, it has uh, straps on all four uh, sides and, and, and in essence to, uh, uh, to, to represent intimidation. And uh, you know, when you see somebody wearing something like that, uh, but at the same time, it's beautiful. You know? So uh, we get different types of insights from things we see. Now in the middle though, we have Malachite, which is from Democratic Republic of the Congo and elsewhere. So that uh, piece of malachite there, uh, you know, de you definitely, you know, gets lots of uh, malachite jewelry. In fact, you get a lot of malachite jewelry in South Africa, but a lot of times it's just folks who came from the DRC uh, and other places uh, where you can get that. In the in the center there is a Cameroonian bass that a basket that I have sitting uh, the the malachite stone on, and that um, that malachite uh, uh, stone. Uh, is in a uh, this this really kind of uh, beautiful basket, and <clears throat> the bottom, the top, uh, and the and the um, insides are all beautifully done. Uh, that this beaded all over the place, and so then we get to see see it in in a kind of different uh, form and fashion when we when we look at it. Um, let me see if that uh, kind of goes. And one rare piece of ivory. Uh, we don't see much ivory anymore, but. Let me just, while we're focusing on that piece of ivory, uh, that ivory pendant uh, is also from uh, uh, the DRC or from uh, Zaire, uh, former Zaire. And, uh, you know, this is a, a, a miniature version of a, of a larger mask that would have been uh, given to someone who came through uh, a rites of passage program, right? So uh, that the, the, um, these masks uh, are, are important. Uh, uh, pieces to demonstrate that someone successfully went through an age grade uh, ceremony. This is an ivory mask. It's a replica of something that's worn when young folks go through initiation process. In the middle is one of the most important pieces. This is the Sankofa bird. And the Sankofa bird is uh, also a, 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 a Ghanaian symbol. And it means that uh, to know where you're going, you have to have uh, know where you've been. So the bird flies forward, but looks back. So that uh, when you think about the uh, Sankofa bird, uh, what, you, what you see on the back of the bird also is an egg. And so then that bird with the egg, that the egg represents something about uh, that, uh, that the, the bird also has to protect the egg, right? So that we have to protect uh, our own history, our story. Uh, we have to protect the youth. And so as we see that, that we then have a obligation to uh, make sure that, that as this, we're trying to, the bird is trying to get from place A to place B, or where the children are trying to get from place A to B, place B, that uh, when they're grown, when they're growing, before they're, they, the egg is hatched, we've got to prepare the surroundings. And so that's what this represents, that we, we have to uh, prepare the surroundings of it and make sure that that then that's the thing that we're doing and we, we do so in, in, a, in, a, in a powerful way, right? Uh, we're gonna keep moving forward here. 
uh, know where you've been. So the bird flies forward but looks back. Also in here we have a piece from, uh, this is from Haiti. So this is a, a, a bag, a purse made in Haiti. And this piece here is from Cote d'Ivoire. It's a replica of a dancer uh, in Cote d'Ivoire. Let me just, bag, uh, while we're made. on this bag here, this is also from Nigeria. Uh, that uh, another one of our Nigerian uh, piece, this uh, uh, beaded uh, vestment uh, necklace piece, right? So that, that they would wear this as a necklace. And oftentimes these things, um, they're similar ones. They, they, I used to make some, as a matter of fact, they're called bahashis and that, that you put things in them, they have a flap on them, uh, or sometimes they you just pull up from the bottom and that it opens up from the bottom. So there's different versions of them. And, uh, you know, that we give, give, give us some, uh, some things to see. Um, the, uh, when we look at the, the next piece here, uh, you'll see that, that there is a, um, hey, and this piece here is from hey, Cote d'Ivoire. It's a replica necklace of a that you see in the center. Uh, and I'm not sure if I spend a lot of time going over the necklace, but, uh, I just wanted to, to this is a piece from, uh, the Maasai and East Africa. So we don't have a lot of stuff from East Africa. There's a couple of pieces I have in here from Kenya. Uh, maybe I didn't show all the Kenyan stuff. Uh, but this piece here in particular is a piece from uh, from from uh, really from Kenya, Tanzania, the Maasai are, are, are not just in one place. Uh, but this uh, particular one um, has glass beads from the 19th century, uh, and these are worn around. This this particular one has uh, iron uh, rings on it, and so then they, you know it, 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 when you look at these 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 things that they when you look at the Maasai and you'll see them when they're dancing and they, they, they have uh, uh, these, these pieces on them and they can be fairly heavy, uh, but, they, but they're really, I, I, I think I enjoy them. I think that they uh, give a good portrayal of the history and culture of, of the people of the area. And, and that's really what, the, what we're trying to do is to, to demonstrate a, a diverse set of uh, experiences that uh, we see uh, from uh, Africans on the continent. Uh, now, this particular doll here, uh, really, I, 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 I meant to have a video up of the dancer, uh, and I might be able to do that real quick because I, I really think that you would enjoy uh, seeing the amazing dance that these do. These are uh, the, the, the Zaoli uh, dancers, and these are from uh, uh, Cote d'Ivoire. And uh, this doll, <coughs> excuse me, this doll is a, a replica of that. Um, so uh, if you bear with me for two seconds, I'm going to pull up the video of the dancer and so that you can actually see uh, what that is. So give me two seconds. And I think you'll really enjoy it. Oh, somebody asked me to show the bag from Haiti again. OK, I'll do that. Let me do that real quick and I'll go. Then I'll go and show the, the doll. OK, here's that that bag, the bag from Haiti. And what you can't see on here is that it actually has the word Haiti inscribed uh, on the bag itself. Uh, so you have to come up here to get the, 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 the in-depth detail of it. I think there might actually be a picture that I have over here of it. So if we have time, I'll, I'll pull the picture up as well. But this is the bag from Haiti. Uh, and then we also have some other things here that were art pieces from uh, not just from Haiti, but also from uh, uh, Antigua, uh, Jamaica, um, Cuba, uh, and other parts of the island. So we, we, you know, we, we make sure we have a very diverse. And as uh, Professor Smith said, uh, what is Pan-Africanism? I think this is, a, this is what we mean by Pan-Africanism, that we're displaying the broad, broad stroke uh, uh, understanding of what African history and culture is both on the continent and in the diaspora. So here we are in the diaspora celebrating African history, uh, but that African history is a continuous thread. So you see the sweetgrass basket, which is a replica of some of the things that were done in Africa. And, and so then this, this, this goes to show and mirror the, the relationship between the continent and the, the Africans in the diaspora. 
Uh, someone asked, are there any artifacts from Panama? Uh, yeah, I'm waiting for you to bring those so we can have some Panamanian stuff here. <laughs> no, I don't have any Panamanian things right now. Uh, we should have something from uh, Dr. White. She's from Panama. Panama. Uh, so uh, I charge her with uh, uh, getting us some, uh, some artifacts from, from Panama. <laughs> and, so, you know, we got a lot of Guyanese brothers and sisters here <clears throat> uh, that we need to make sure we got. <laughs> I see them scratching their throats. <laughs> uh, so we need to make sure they get their, uh, their stuff from Panama, from, from uh, uh, Guyana as well so that we have some representation from Central and South America. Um, I do have some stuff here from Brazil. I visited Brazil in 2018, um, oh no, 2008. Uh, so I do have some stuff from, uh, uh, from Brazil as well. So there's, might've been before 2008. Yeah, uh, might've been 2006. Now that I'm thinking about it. It's been a while since I've, I've been back to that part of the world. So I need to, I need to get back to Brazil. All right, give me two seconds here and I'm gonna pull up the, the video for you. The leg movements. The mask. But I hope you enjoy that, uh, that their uh, dancing is uh, amazing, and and uh, if you try to do that that move where it's your feet, you you're not moving any of your upper body, but just your feet up and down like that. I guarantee you, if you haven't tried it, you'll be falling on the floor. <laughs> so uh, uh, you know, but give it a try. I think it, it, it's really awesome, uh, and so I think you'll enjoy uh, uh, going through that process because uh, it, it's it's fascinating. Um, so uh, you know the the uh, we're gonna go back outside now and we're gonna wrap it up. Uh, and if you all have any any questions as we go through this last part, uh, I'll be glad to answer any. Uh, we're gonna take, uh, but I'll I'll be outside, so I won't be able to see any of your comments. Uh, is your video working now? Okay. All right. So uh, my daughter is gonna meet us out there, and we're gonna be back on camera. So uh, j join me outside, everybody. All right. Here we go. Look at this on the way out the door. You got a little echo, but check this out. Here's, here's a Kenyan mask. I told you we had some here for you. This is the outside of the Africana Institute. So this is our, uh, this is the, the, the beauty of the Africana Institute. So when I became the director, I had all this, uh, I asked for this to be all redone. So that we had two metal doors here. I had them, uh, they took down the metal doors and put all these, this wood paneling up as the rest of down here were being redone. That was the, my vision for this. And so now we have a, a fully functioning uh, thing that you can see. So we're right across from the Mary Birch Theater. And when you come out here, you can see all the, uh, the, the nine boxes here. So these are the nine boxes where all the artwork are. Uh, in the beginning of the box, what I mentioned before, I didn't mention any of the artifacts that were in here, uh, but you'll see down in the bottom that these are some of the gold weights uh, that you would have found from, from Ghana, these three pieces here, a little Malachite owl. Uh, and then over there in the corner, you have, uh, uh, that's a, uh, a cup from uh, South Africa and a shakere. So the, the, uh, the piece that has the, the Yoruba pieces here, uh, this box up here was donated to the Africana Institute by the uh, University of, of, of um, Ileife. Uh, they came here, we were trying to set up a relationship with the Africana Institute, well, Everly Essex County College. And, um, and so they, they had brought this gift. Uh, so then you see down below here though, this is all the stuff is from Nigeria. This is uh, Ibeji, and so Ibeji are the twins. Uh, here you have uh, a, 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 a bronze uh, uh, head, and this uh, piece is, you'll see this with a, a piece like this for Oduduwa, uh, for the Oni, uh, for uh, different kings, uh, but there's formal headdress that you see on it. And over here you see a, 
a warrior really kind of representing, uh, you know, there's different stories about this, but really uh, I would suggest this is a warrior, it's iron. So iron is a, a powerful piece dealing with Ogun. Uh, and so Ogun is one of the Orishas uh, so that we have to, to think about uh, uh, who that was. This other box here is, as I've said before, is all about Jamaica. Uh, we, we went over that one already. Uh, and then uh, here with the instruments, we saw those before, all these other pieces we kind of went over and talked about. Uh, and then here's the piece here where you just saw the, the dancer uh, that you saw here. Uh, so this is the, another look at the, at the dancer. And maybe we can get a close up of the Haitian bag so that you can see, oh, where the reflection the glass? Uh, so that there's no reflection. So that you'll see the word Haiti at the top <laughs> it gives you a little bit more uh, closer understanding of it. Um, and then uh, lastly here, this was the last box that was in here. And uh, these are all the pieces. Uh, this is the um, uh, uh, piece from ancient uh, Kemet. These are, uh, this is a, a flask uh, that my wife and I got on our wedding. Um, and this was a, uh, a, a King Tut Ankaman or King Tut, uh, and um, and there's another uh, piece here. Actually, I got that one from my, my mother and father gave me this piece here, uh, <laughs> and then uh, and then this piece here is uh, you know is is a, a, a the one that we already talked about uh, that being written in three different languages. The top you can see it's in the Metanetra. Uh, and at the bottom, I believe it's in Greek in the center. I think that's the, um, the, uh, the uh, it's either in uh, demonic or in heretic. I'm not sure which one of the other uh, ancient uh, Kemetic or Egyptian languages uh, that it is. Um, hmm? and yeah, this is what this is. This is the Rosetta Stone. Uh, so-called Rosetta Stone. It's, uh, you know, whomever was the original author. This is a, So you can see as this being a, re a replica that this is a, 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 a in pieces and it, the pieces represent, you know, what it, what it is. Uh, oh, so there was potentially, maybe there was more to it. Uh, and maybe there was other pieces like this uh, that we have, but this is the piece that we have now and which able, enabled us to translate much of the uh, comedic script. So uh, that's it for today. Uh, we're gonna go back to the office and I'm gonna be uh, take any comments or questions. I hope that you all have really enjoyed this. I really wanna thank again, all the folks who made this possible. Uh, I want to uh, take this uh, for a moment and say hello to TS, say hello. <laughs> that's my camera woman. Uh, she's done a great job, so I'm appreciative of her. And uh, everyone who helped make these boxes uh, possible, uh, folks in the facilities department who helped them get some of the lighting together. Uh, um, so that th those were people in, uh, um, in graphics who helped put some of the, 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 the photo work together. So, you know, nothing happens as an individual. We all work together to make these things happen. And it takes a lot of people, a lot of time to create the time and space for these things. Uh, so that, that we're, we're excited that we're able to, to tell those stories and to really have a, a, a fascinating uh, experience for folks. And we hope that you really enjoyed it, uh, that you got a chance to see uh, something about the African Institute. And so you didn't see everything. So there's more stuff to be seen. So we're going to set up another one of these at some other time. And then maybe you all come back with us and tell a friend and we'll have hundreds of people here the next go around and we'll talk about what you all see and what you might want to see. Um, as we are closing out, uh, you come with me. I want to share one last thing with you. Uh, welcome to the African Institute. We may say Ingena. Uh, I am back and I'm thankful that you all are here. I really hope that you all enjoyed it. Uh, you know, uh, it was a, a, a fabulous time for me. Uh, the last thing I want to share with you here is uh, the, the coming up, we have a, 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 a amazing program next week and I don't want you to miss it. So I wanna share uh, with you the, the flyer for the event. Um, so if you bear with me for two more seconds, 
uh, then I can share with you uh, the uh, event we have coming up next week. And uh, it's the next week's event is called the uh, Garvey and Krumah Lecture. So uh, really, if you want, uh, uh, Professor, uh, um, you asked about uh, our Pan-Africanism. Next week, we're going to have a, uh, a great lecture, our 10th our annual lecture, in fact, of the Garvey and Krumah uh, lecture series. So uh, that would be a great opportunity for any of your students to learn something about uh, the uh, 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 learn anything about um, uh, uh, Pan-Africanism. So let me share this uh, flyer. And then uh, if anyone has questions, please, uh, uh, you can either raise your hand or put it up in the chat. Uh, and I'll be glad to attend to any questions. Okay, so there we have it. Uh, that's the uh, flyer. We got a, a couple of comments. I'm going to turn this uh, flyer off now, and I'll come back to you all here. Uh, Sister, Fre thank you. you. Thank you, Sister Frederica. I appreciate you. Uh, J uh, Professor S uh, Smith, your hand is up again. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Thank you. King, uh, King Downing reminded me we had a, 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 a on Tuesday, we had a, a great uh, 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 interview on WBAI. With, with, with him and, and his students, and it was really fa fantastic. So I wanna thank uh, King and all the, uh, all the students who uh, had questions and, and helped to share uh, what, we're, what we're talking about uh, uh, to, to other people. So I think that was, it was fabulous. I also wanna take a moment to recognize, I'm not sure if he's still here, but the, uh, uh, the Council General from uh, South Africa uh, was on the call as well. Uh, let's see, uh, uh, Council General uh, Tawana, are you still here? I don't see you. Um, all right, well, we, we have uh, 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 Professor Sue who, who wants to say a word. Go ahead, Professor. Hi, can you hear me? Hi, Dr. Yes. Pinfani. Great show. I uh, enjoyed it. Learned a lot of new things today. Um, I was wondering, since you, you, you take a trip with your students, like, uh, because this is an educational trip every year, right? So the COVID has affected us, I think, in, uh, yeah, in, in disabling the trip. So do you plan uh, to go this summer to, for an educational tour? Yeah, I'm not <laughs> sure if we're going uh, this summer in particular, but uh, we're looking to get back out as soon as possible, as soon as it's uh, everything is in is, is is possible for us to do. We, I, I'm 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 itching for another trip to go abroad. So <laughs> I, okay. I, I would love to do it sooner than later, but I uh, have to wait at this point uh, until uh, everything is is uh, is copacetic for us to do. But I, I'm I'm sure that I, I have some students who are signing up with some of our third partners to uh, third party partners to go uh, to 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 go abroad. And so, uh, you know, we, we, I'm sure we'll get some to go broad soon, uh, but we're, so we're are these, Also, are these tours restricted to um, only the students in your department or it, is it open to all the departments? It's always open to uh, both on campus, off campus, students, staff, faculty. Uh, we've had the president to go with us on trips. We've had uh, uh, deans to go with us on trip. In fact, Dean White has been on all the trips that we've taken. Um, oh. We've had uh, faculty to go on trips. Uh, we've had community members to go on trips. Uh, so yeah, so it, it's, it's nice. definitely been, uh, uh, you know, some of the trips that are like when we went to China, uh, I also mm -hmm. run the Center for Global Education and Experiences. So when I went to China, that particular trip was a, an academic course trip so we didn't have any community members go on that particular trip, but all the others, we've always had community members go on a trip with us. I think the physics depart, department and chemistry members did go on that trip, if I'm correct, or physics mainly. That was, yeah, so when we were in uh, China, yes, they did. Great show, Dr. Kalfani. Thanks a Thank lot. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You Thank much. you. Thank you. Brother Shaka George, how are you doing, sir? Well, thank you. Thank you, my brother. How are you? Excellent, thank you. Well, first of all, thank you for inviting us into your home. That was beautiful, uh, very wonderful presentation. 
uh, the only thing I have to say is that I have to make sure that most of more carving, more painting from Haiti, because it, it, you know we, we, we need more stuff on that wall, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm looking for your help, brother. Looking for your help. Definitely. Uh, yeah, I, let, I, I, let's I, let's, I, let's make it happen. Not a problem. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other comments or questions anyone has? Uh, if there are none, we'll say we'll bid you all a uh, good night. And uh, we thank you very much for joining us. And uh, we look forward to having you next week. Please join us. Uh, the As I said, the uh, uh, next week is going to be fabulous. Uh, thank you, everybody, who those who donated, those who helped make this possible. Uh, we really appreciate all of that that made it possible to happen. Uh, I think uh, I see, uh, I even got family members here. My sister is here, my mother is here. Uh, so I'm glad they're all here joining us. Uh, my daughter's with me. So, you know, it's fabulous that to have family uh, join us on, on these things. They get to see a little bit of, uh, they live in California and Arizona, so they don't get to see much of what I do. So this gives them a, a firsthand experience of some of, uh, some of our workings uh, here at the college. Uh, so um, uh, we, we appreciate you all and, uh, look forward to uh, you all joining us next time. Uh, many people have asked for next week to be on uh, a link. Uh, so I'm, I'm working to, to set that up. Uh, it's not set up yet, but, but uh, uh, I'm really trying to get you to come and join us. If you can't join us, then I'll send out a link. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, I see also we have uh, uh, Professor Patrick St. Fort. He joined us in China. So thank you for joining us, Patrick, uh, Professor St. Fort. All right. Good night, everyone.